Hey, what's up everybody? Max here coming to you with another viewer request video. Today's request is for a lick uh, from the band Chon off their most recent album, Grow, off the song Story. Uh, and on this album they have a bunch of different drummers, not just their own, who is uh, Nathan Camarina, but on this song Story, there is a drummer by the name of Brian Evans. Uh, so this groove uh, is eight bars long, and it makes use of displaced polyrhythms. So it's pretty confusing at first, but once we break it down, it'll make a lot of sense. And it's definitely worth the effort because it's a ton of fun to play, especially uh, to play along with the song. Uh, but before we take a look at it, I'd like to recommend that you click the Dropbox link here and download the full sheet music for this so you can have it and follow it along because I won't have the space to put all of the sheet music up on the screen uh, as I go through it. So, without further ado, let's check it out. So, right off the bat, this is what the lick sounds like. So since this groove is so long as eight bars uh, and Brian Evans switches up the feel about every two bars, we're just going to take it two bars at a time. So let's look at the first two bars. So it's kind of confusing to look at, so I'll explain uh, what exactly it is that he's doing here. So Brian Evans, who's the drummer on this specific song, um, He's keeping a 3-4 beat feel, like 1 and 2 and 3 and, um, but or that phrasing, but he's not actually playing 8th notes. He's playing 8th note triplets displaced by a 16th note triplet, or in this case, as I've written it, 8th uh, note sextuplets displaced by a 16th note sextuplet, which makes for a really cool groove, especially since the guitars don't really change what they're doing and the whole thing's actually in 4-4. Four, four. So when he goes into this, he's coming from a straight 16th groove, and even the first bar of this, uh, first beat, excuse me, of these two bars is just two straight eighth notes. Um, so before you start working with a metronome, what I'd recommend you do is actually just count the sextuplets, just one, two, three, four, five, six, um, under your playing to help you hear how it's supposed to sound and line things up properly. Uh, on top of that, I really recommend that you listen to this part of the song a lot because that's what I had to do to, uh, well, one, transcribe it and, and just hear it right in my head so that I could play it properly. Um, but definitely do this counting exercise. And if you have trouble getting the timing right, even with this one, um, you can kind of add a pickup note into the displacement on the last sextuplet of uh, the first beat. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, so let me play it through you for you uh, with the counting so you can hear this exercise. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One. So when you're doing that, you should count it out so it keeps you honest and you can kind of hear and, uh, and really feel where that's all supposed to line up. So once you do that counting exercise a bunch and get the feel for the uh, timing and displacement, then you can start working with a metronome. And now if you have a metronome like Polynome or one of those that can count the sextuplets for you, I'd recommend starting with that because it uh, gives you more points of reference uh, to keep you on track. And if not, then I'd give an eighth note pulse um, so that you can still have more points of reference than just uh, quarter notes. So let's move on to looking at the next two bars. So for this one, um, it's kind of repetitive and it's good because it has overlap with the last two bar phrase that we just looked at. 
So uh, covering what's new, um, beats one, three uh, of the first bar and beat one of the uh, second bar are all the same but new. So what he's doing here is the hi-hat or the right hand uh, um, is just on one and four of the sextuplets or which equates to uh, regular eighth notes. Uh, and the foot is doing the same thing but also playing on six. So the hand's just one, two, three, four, five, six and the foot is one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the drums, one, two, three, four, five, six. So then beats two and four of the first bar and beat two of the second bar are the same as beat four of the first bar of the last segment we looked at, which just goes um, and it's the same as that one. And all he's doing on top of that is adding in uh, some open hi-hat notes. So then beats three and four of the second bar here, he switches it up and kind of does a fill where he uh, has evenly spaced bass drum and open hi-hat notes, and then he goes in, uh, with a drag into three snare hits, um, which lead into the next uh, two-bar segment. So this one is just uh, count it, uh, slow, uh, f especially for this uh, last two beats. And as you can see, the first hi-hat note, open hi-hat note uh, on beat three is of the second bar uh, is cut short as denoted by the foot hat uh, that you can see right next to it. So for all the other open hi-hat notes, uh, let ring until the next, or for like a, for a little while or until the next uh, major hit. Um, so slowly, let me count all of this for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, track five, six. Um, so these two bars um are very similar to the next two bar phrase that I'm going to show you. Um, and the only difference is where he's opening the hi-hat. So let me play uh, the next two bar phrase for you. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So it's almost exactly the same, and it's even easier because you don't have that fill at the end. So altogether, that four bar segment goes something like this. So now let's go on to the next and last two bars. Okay, so for these two bars, um, he starts to go into this kind of crazy fill thing. Um, and as you can see, I stopped transcribing after beat one of the second bar here because he just kind of goes into this uh, wild all over the kit, 32nd note sextuplet, uh, 32nd note, um, sorry, uh, not sextuplet, uh, fill. Um, and that's not the focal point of it, and with all my efforts, I could not figure out exactly. Um, and so I just thought I'd leave it up to you to figure out what you want to do and enjoy uh, going wild in those three bars, and then just make sure that you end on beat one of the following uh, measure with a crash and a kick note. So uh, for this one, it's not too difficult. Uh, once again, just take it uh, slow and count it, and then I'll go over the different sticking patterns that you can use for this one. So counting, one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And I uh, stopped counting for beat one of the second bar because it goes to straight time. 
Um, so you don't really have to count that as much. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that beat two and beat three of the first bar, uh, there's a bunch of different ways to stick it. Um, and I'm going to show you three. So I, the way I do it is I bring my right hand down twice. So uh, I'll show that right now. So it'll go end up going right, left, 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 right, which makes you have to put your left up to the hi-hat and kind of do a crossover. So this is how I do it with bringing your right down twice. And again, slower. Um, you can also do this just bringing your right down once so you don't have to do that hi-hat crossover. Um, so you just, right is the first hit and then the rest are lefts. So like, uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, and again. So um, that avoids the crossover, uh, which some of you might like better. Or if you just feel like sticking it out and getting a left hand workout, you can uh, just stick it out with your left hand um, and not bring your right down at all. So, um, which also works. So I'd say just try them all out and see which one you're comfortable with and you like the most. Um, and then as I said before, for those last three bars of this phrase, you can just fill and do whatever you want and have fun with it, but make sure you end with um, a crash on the one of the following measure. So now I'm going to play along with it, the actual song, and show you what it all sounds like up to speed together. So I hope you enjoyed learning this lick and can make great use of it in your own playing. If you have any questions about this lick or licks that you'd like to see me do in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.